Hello, my wonderful pen friends. Thank you so much for joining me here for another fountain pen review video. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about a pen from a company I've reviewed before, uh, Fountain Pen Revolution, or FPR as they are often known in the community. Now, FPR is a company that uh, the, the owner is an American, but the pens are manufactured, I believe, in India, where, where these pens are manufactured. Um, and I've reviewed their pens before. Unfortunately, in the past, I've not had great experiences with the pens. Uh, they're, they're quite inexpensive pens, um, but over the years, I've heard that the quality has improved. And, uh, and so when Kevin, the owner of FPR, reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in reviewing a couple of the newer models, I said, sure. So he sent them over for review and giveaway. So uh, that is what I will be reviewing today. And in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya. So this is the pen. It comes in this bright, they call it saffron orange acrylic. And it uh, there's it comes in six colors total. And some acrylics and some ebonites. It's and it's really quite affordable. This pen uh, retails for twenty nine bucks. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, bit of the review though. So you've got a little finial here. You've got a clip that is very similar to many other clips I have seen on pens that come out of India. So I suspect this is kind of a stock clip. It's folded metal. It's a little on the the flimsy, bouncy side, but it's not bad. Uh, then the, the material comes down. You've got this large cap band here on the end, and then the barrel itself tapers down. You've got a small point here. It's a pretty, you know, straightforward design. The material is gorgeous. It's got a lot of chatoyance in there. Um, you know, these dark, dark black swirls. This reminds me of a few different materials that I've seen. So Omas had a material very similar to this. Um, in their Noti di Bologna, and you can see my review of that on YouTube or over on penhabit.com. And this is also a somewhat reminiscent of the persimmon swirl acrylic that that uh, Anderson Pen uses on their Collier, I believe it is. Um, you know, you've seen orange and black before in pens, and uh, this is really quite an attractive material, though. Um, it's beautifully polished. The clip is not super tightly installed. Like, the the if we're getting really nitpicky here, you can actually feel the metal on this side. So it, it feels like the clip is just a little bit, the ring of the clip is just a little bit wider around than the material or it's not centered or something like that. It's a minor issue, probably pretty easy to fix, but uh, it, it isn't there. Um, the cap comes off there and it's, let's do the, the twist test here. So it's one two full turns to take off. And then you've got a, an acrylic section, the same material. This is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, the threads are very tight and this is eyedropperable. So you can eyedropper this if you want to. And then it comes with this um, international standard converter. It's a draw type converter. And uh, I'll flick the ink down toward the nib here because <laughs> we're going to have to do some writing here in just a bit. Um, I don't love the style of converters, but it is standard international from what I can gather, so you could replace it with a, a slightly higher quality converter if you wanted to. Um, then we get to the nib. So this is a number five and a half nib, and this is one of Fountain Pen Revolution's steel flex nibs. So uh, it's halfway in between a number five and a number six, but it has got this nice long uh, nib slit. There's no breather hole, but the nib slit basically comes almost all the way down to the, the flange of the converter or of the uh, section here. And then you've got an ebonite feed underneath, which in theory should help with the ink flow on flex writing. So overall, it's, you know, it's a little on the small side when it's un uncapped, unposted, but it's not uncomfortable. It's long enough to use unposted if you want to. Very light because it's acrylic. Um, the section's a little narrow and a little small for my tastes, but so I end up holding it like on the threads, but the threads aren't sharp at all. They're well machined, very smooth. And the pen does post quite deeply. The cap is very light. So this is a pen I prefer to use posted, and it's actually quite comfortable in the hand. So if you like a pen that is a little bit lighter, this would be a really great one to consider. So let's go ahead and do some measurements and comparisons, a writing sample, and then we'll talk about that $29 price point.
So the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that I changed my shirt from the first half of the video to now. There's a reason for that. Um, And before I get into a writing review, I'm going to explain what that reason is because it ties into something I said in the first half of the review. So I said I don't like these plunger style converters. And the reason, one of the main reasons I don't like these plunger style converters is because if you need to prime the feed for some reason, as I did during the, I started to record the writing review and needed to prime the feed a little bit, I started to try to push down a little bit on this and ended up squirting ink all over my brand new shirt. This is why I don't like these styles of of converters. I also don't like them because they can sometimes get caught on the inside of the barrel and you end up compressing the converter down as you go to close it to to screw it it closed. So I don't like these style of converters at all. Um, By the way, if you get ink in your clothing, keep it wet, do a pre-soak in an OxyClean solution, and generally speaking, that will get most inks out of clothing the like the bulletproof inks and the cellulose reactive inks like noodlers and that kind of thing that that's a different story but for most inks you're going to be okay doing that um i've i've gotten ink on my clothes before and that's usually how i take care of it don't dry the clothing in the dryer until you have gotten the ink out once you dry it you've pretty much set it in place so just a little little tidbit there now let's get back to the writing review The first thing people are going to want to know about this, because it has a flex nib, is how does it flex? Now, I've talked about steel flex nibs before, and I will say that my feelings about them haven't changed a whole lot. I don't love them. They require a lot of downward pressure to flex, um, especially compared to a gold nib. Now, this is one of the better flex nibs I've used, but, you know, it... You have to be careful and go a little slow. You don't get tons of line variation here, uh, but you do get enough that you can do some interesting things, um, you know, some some extra flourishes and that kind of thing. Um, You might see a little bit of this railroading type thing going on here. And I think that has a lot to do with the problems that I have with the ink um, not, uh, the ink not, kind of clinging. It kind of clings to the walls of these converters, so I'm going to switch out the converter on this pen, I suspect. For day-to-day writing, day-to-day, I really don't have any problems with the pen. The the nib is pretty smooth. There's a little bit of feedback, but it's, oh, and you keep seeing the top of my head. I need to work on not bending over the paper when I write write my samples. Um, It's really not bad. It's, um, It's a nice, generous ink flow. It's actually a very generous ink flow for regular non-flex writing. And this pen requires so much pressure to flex that I find it quite uncomfortable to write flex-wise. Like, this nib is not soft enough that if you just write regularly, you're going to get line variation. You actually have to pretty uh, deliberately push to get the line variation. And when you do, you might run into some ink flow slowdown issues. It just depends. Uh, But... Overall, I've been really pretty impressed with this pen. Uh, it's it's c- pretty comfortable in the hand, despite being a little bit on the narrower side. The, the nib is good. It's not going to be a super flexible nib. It doesn't feel like a vintage flex nib, a vintage gold flex nib by any stretch of the imagination. But if you want to play around with a little bit of line variation, these are pretty inexpensive nibs to get and uh, a very inexpensive pen to get. And you should be able to have some fun playing around with these nibs quite a bit. Now, I mentioned earlier in the video that this pen retails for $29, which is really not a bad price. The construction quality is pretty good. Um, it's just minor little things like the, um, the clip here not being the sturdiest, but the threads are smooth. The machining is quite nice. Uh, you know, my only real complaints about this pen are the the little overhang on the clip here and the converter that the pen came with. But you could switch that out pretty easily. So, so for twenty nine dollars, I really think that this is a pretty good value of a pen. Um, it fits in a it fits in that realm of like the Twisby Eco or the Lamy Safari. Certainly more interesting material than in either of those, and a, a kind of a different writing experience. When you're dealing with steel, inexpensive steel flex nibs, you of course have to compare them to noodlers. 
Now, I will say that I prefer this head and shoulders above any of the Noodler's Flex pens I've tried, mainly because it worked. Um, it's not perfect for flex writing, but it worked, and it worked well out of the box, and there was no tinkering. I haven't had to take the nib out and adjust the feed or do a heat set or you know, any of that kind of stuff. It's just worked for me, and it's comfortable in the hand. It's a nice material. It seems to be pretty well made. So overall, I consider this a pretty good value and uh, an interesting way to you know, play around with line variation in your writing and see if you even enjoy writing with a flex nib. So uh, that has been my review of the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya. Uh, aside from that, that Fakakta converter <laughs> that got ink on my shirt, um, I actually like the pen quite a bit. And this uh, has kind of this and the other Fountain Pen Revolution pen I'm going to be taking a look at have changed my opinions about some of the FPR pens a fair bit. I kind of swore them off a couple years ago, but uh, decided to give them another try, and I'm glad I did because this is a this is not a bad option. I actually like this one quite a bit, and it would be it will also be very cool in ebonite because if you want an ebonite pen, thirty bucks for an ebonite pen is not going to be a bad way to go. So, hope you've enjoyed this review. Uh, this pen will be going up for giveaway at some point in the future, so keep an eye over on penhabit.com or on the Penhabit Facebook or Twitter pages. And we will see you here soon for another review video. Thanks for watching. Bye. I think the first question everyone really wants to know is, okay, they call this a flex nib. How does it flex? So let's show you. This is how it flexes. Now, this is a steel flex nib. Let's make sure the ink is toward the tip here. So this is not going to... Oh. And this is why I don't like those plunger-filled converters, because if you need to prime the pump, there's almost no way to do it without squirting ink all over creation and getting it on your brand new flannel shirt, which I am now going to go change and come back in just a moment.